Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2018 WDBS Paris Q's Champion of Champions here at the South West Snooker Academy here in Gloucester. Thanks for coming back. We, uh, we streamed our first match this morning at 10 o'clock. This is the 2 o'clock session. And this is a Group 3 event match between Scotland's William Thompson and England's Daniel Blunt. Should be a fantastic match. Both are former champions on the WDBS circuit. We will talk about the WDBS and what uh, their aims and values are throughout the throughout the events, but we'll uh, concentrate on the, the match in hand to, to begin with. I am going to be joined in the commentary box very shortly um, by Andrew Harper, who's uh, another Group 3 competitor uh, in this event this weekend. Hello everyone. And this is Andrew. Hello Andrew, how are you? You okay? I'm well, I'm well. I'm looking forward to this match. It should be a great one. So you um, you played your first uh, first game this morning. It was against uh, Daniel. How how did you get on? How how did you find it? Uh, it was a great game. He won three two in the end, but uh, you know decent standard, a couple of forty odds, good safety play. Just he was better in the end. So you you obviously still in the game with it being so obviously round robin. Obviously you lost, but that's that's a narrow defeat. So obviously like frame difference come into play. How, how did you find sort of the conditions? Compared to obviously what we usually play now, obviously like club venues, these are you know really really tight tables, reactive tables. But you know it's a nice arena to play in, isn't it? It's different class. You, you know you just start um, you just overhitting everything at first, just um, bashing balls too too hard because you're used to playing on carpets for cloths, and then you come <laughs> you come here, you, know, you barely touch the ball, and <laughs> three feet past where you wanted to go. <laughs> Fantastic. So I was just I was just introducing obviously um, uh, Daniel and, and William, like I said. Everyone in this group have won sort of tournaments on the WDBS circuit. Obviously, in recent months, William and, and Daniel have won events. Um, William won his opening match against uh, Nigel Coton three 0 So, so both William and, and Daniel have got off to to, to winning starts. Well, they're both heavy. They're both heavy favourites for this tournament. You know, there's no, there's no denying. No point me and Nigel pretending, but they are the favourites. But uh, and this should be a very good match because both good bike break builders, both good safe play. See what happens. Yeah, we're saying. Um, obviously, that this is a, a rerun of a couple of finals as well. I think they they played uh, in Northampton last month. Was was one of the finals they they played. William come through that, but uh, n you know favourites don't always win. So there's there's still a chance of uh, qualification for all, all players in the group. It's um, it is a round robin format um, for each group this weekend. So there, there's four players um, in, in each event, and those are the those players have earned their position here because they've either won an event or they've been one of the best performing players in their category over the last uh, couple of years so this really is a showcase of the best players on the on the WDBS circuit. He's caught that one a bit thin hasn't he? Yeah there's a little bit thin and like we like you were saying Andrew if, if you get something a little bit wrong on these tables it's, it goes a lot wrong doesn't it because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because usually on, on a club table you'd probably just be roughly about the balk line you know, back in the uh, <laughs> first half of the table. We noticed that in the first game we, we, we showed a, a group six game uh, between Leroy Williams, oh, Ooh. that's a bit of a <laughs> miscue there. Um, between Leroy and uh, Daniel Harwood, and th there was a couple of shots down down the cushions that you know literally just touched the the cushion, and, and they won't go in. So you know it took a little bit of time for both players to sort of get used to that, and they, they were a little bit apprehensive under hitting, over hitting things. So it will take players a little little while to do that. I'm also pretty certain this is both of their first times on a stream, and I, I can imagine that play. I've never played on stream before, but I can imagine it uh, messing with your mind a bit. You know. Yep. So this is so. Um, I'll just go through a little bit of information about sort of both players. So um, William, before I forget, William wants me to give a shout out to his son Luca. So uh, hello, Luca. I hope you're watching at home, or uh, if if you're watching sort of a repeat. Um, Hope you're enjoying Daddy play. Um, so I've got out of the way before I f forget that. But uh, let's say William Williams from Scotland. He's a he's a four-time winner of our our events. Um, sorry, he's a three-time winner here at events on on the circuit. I mean, he recently won last month at Barrett's at the um, Open Disability Championships in Northampton last month. Like I say, he did actually beat Daniel in the final event. Whilst Daniel himself is a four-time winner, he actually won the very first um, WDBS. 
uh, event here back in 2015, I think. Yeah, so you yeah. beat Muggins here in the final. I beat you in the final, <laughs> in the final. <laughs> okay. So you remember that well. That's I've got to, I've got to the, every time I've been played here, I got to the final, and every time I've lost in the final. <laughs> well, it's a good omen getting to the final. <laughs> Obviously, you want to go one, one further this time. Well, they always pay the, they always pay the final, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, so you, you've cashed each event, then, so that's all right. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, in terms of Daniel, Daniel's a, a four-time winner on the WW, WDBS circuit. Um, he also won um, our first event in Belgium this year, so there was a Group Three and Four event in Belgium. So he has actually sort of won a, an overseas title as well, if you, if you want to put it sort of that way. So, uh, um, like I say, there is a bit of history between the pair. They have sort of, um, but they have contested three finals together. Um, Williams won on all three occasions, though. So um, I think Daniel wants a little bit of re revenge here. But uh, like I say, it should be a good game. Both both won their opening fixtures. So whoever wins this is really. I wouldn't say they're definitely mathematically through, but they put themselves in, a, in an extremely strong position to to qualify. Well, if anybody wins, whoever wins this match, if they don't get through, they will be bitterly disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's got tricky shots himself. Now. Yeah. He played it well. Played yeah. It well. Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, a good good shot there from uh, from William. I think he caught the second red. I'm not sure he was quite meaning that, but uh, worked out nicely. Yeah, it's turned out fairly sort of favourably, hasn't it? I mean, it took a couple of sort of deflections, but he's he's got it back to safety, so he can't be too too unhappy with that outcome. No, you have to give um, probably Daniel the edge in the safety play here. He can he can really grind out a match, but uh, we'll see what happens. William actually um, actually plays on the Scottish National Tour, so he, he plays quite a lot of events um, outside of um, the WDBS, so obviously like able-bodied events, things like that. He actually last year, through his results on their ranking list, qualified for the the men's national team, which is a, a fantastic achievement, especially we know sort of like what hotbed of snooker Scotland is. She qualified for that. And somebody said earlier they actually captained the Scotland side, which would be a remarkable achievement if he, if he did. Um, and he also went to the, the European Amateur Championships in Bulgaria at the start of the year. So he also went to Q School as well. I, be, I, I believe. say he definitely went to he went to Q School. He got through the first round, if I believe. Yeah, yeah. I, I know he got through the first round. So you know, William is a is a real serious player. He he plays a lot, competes in a lot of events, and uh, you know, a, a class player as a uh, player as well. What was um. What were the nerves like this morning then in, in your match? You, I mean, there's so much up to skate stake this weekend. There's real high stakes. Obviously, the the trophy, the title, uh, the prize money, and obviously the the golden carrot of the the trip to the WSF Championship. There's quite a lot on the line, isn't there? Uh, yeah, the, uh, I've got to admit, the pressure did get to me a bit at the start. Me, uh, my back arm wasn't quite shaking enough. <laughs> uh, my long pots were rattling. But um, in the second frame, managed to make a 40 odd clearance to pinch that. And after that, it was just a it was a good it was a good, it was a good match. And Daniel seems to have left himself a little bit straight here and tried to force an angle. Can he get a fluke? Nope. No, no luck there. But um, I'm quite sure he's, he's not left it in the, the most favourable of positions for. No, he, can, he definitely can buy himself a lottery ticket after that one. <laughs> well, it is Saturday, so uh, it would be a good time to do that. So how how often do you, do you play... Um, like a week or a month, Andrew. Do you, do you play in like leagues or um, competitions out of this? Or well, I'm from St. Helens and we have two leagues, so halfway I get to play twice a week, and then uh, I usually practice on a Monday with my coach Craig Harrison. So uh, we get plenty, of, <laughs> we get plenty of opportunities. In. Brilliant. I think we missed the opportunity to shout. Where's the I think we missed the opportunity to shout. Where's the cue ball going? <laughs> I wasn't going to do my John Vogan. I was going to save that a little bit later on the weekend, but uh, I think you've ruined the surprise now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> So it looks like he's he's he can obviously with the cue ball he can position it in an area that he can get through to this red. Dang, obviously, sir. Especially on these these tighter pockets, it's gonna be that's a that's a nice shot. That's a very nice shot. It's, uh, gonna be perfect, on the, perfect on the green. Nice. Just pulled up there, didn't it? He's got a few options. He always had the yellow as a as a safety net as well, didn't he? So he's probably end up playing that and try and get back down to the bottom of the table. It'd be a bit awkward with his waistcoat, obviously, reaching across the red, but. If you can get it thin enough that it doesn't banana, it should be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the issue here, isn't it? I mean, if you play it with with top spin, it's just going to stay at the top of the table. So, just got to be conscious he gets a cue ball out here, really. If he can clear the red below into the right of the black, 
Do you think it will go past the second red towards the pocket? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to tell, isn't it, from from the camera angle? Some, it deceived me a, a couple of times uh, this morning, but I think he's got options down there, isn't he? Because I mean, as long as he gets into a general area, he's going to be either on the red into the middle if or. He's above the pink spot, he's got the red to the middle. Yeah. So if he can catch it thin enough, he can also get to the, on the bottom cushion and clear that. I think, right yeah, I, I think that would have been his ideal. He's landed in a bit of the middle of nowhere, really, at this point. You know, he's still got a few chances, but the uh, cue ball will be running a bit now. It's a shame we can't do the um, pen like they do on the TV. <laughs> uh, we, we, did, we did think that this morning. There was, there was a couple of um, instances with, with snookers, and I think I would have gone... Um, I think there would have been pen all over the screen. I would have come up with a three or four different <laughs> escapes. So we haven't been unleashed with a pen yet. But uh, maybe, maybe future streams, who knows? Well, they've changed the miss rule for this tournament because uh, it used to be just foul and miss, foul and miss, foul and miss. But they've uh, extended it now to only three fouls and misses. And then on the fourth, as long as the uh, uh, players try to hit the red, they can't call a miss. And also, I think I heard the referees sort of brief this morning. Sometimes that. It can be their decision to be impacted on. That's a, that's a good shot. Um, can be impacted on oh, a player's sort of disability, whether or not they can actually get to the shot. So, for example, if like a cue ball was in the middle of a pack or something like that, there's there's some little bit of leeway. Is that that correct? They had to do that because we played a tournament last year, and um, due to a dis uh, gentleman's disability, he was struggling to use the spider full length, you know, like an extended spider. So we kept miscuing, and even though the ball was on, you know, so he could see he could see it. We wasn't snooped, so he threw misses and he gave away the frame. And obviously, we can't. Looking back at that, and it, it's really taken that into account and decided that they won't be doing that anymore. And good on. So, Dang, you could actually get through to the the pink. Then I, I thought it was. Uh, yeah, I thought he was snooped. It's going to be a, a break over, but uh, no positional value in that. But he's, he's happy to take the points. Yeah, and if, it if you can just catch this red on the left hand side table, half ball up and down the table, leave it in the jaws of the pocket. Yeah, he's he's got a. That's the safety. He's caught it a little bit thick. But I don't think he's really left anything on, so, so no, no damage left. No, you can see both players are just sizing themselves up, getting, getting themselves into it. Yeah, it's gone a bit scrappy, unfortunately, hasn't he? Where, where the black is and the, a few of the reds at the bottom end of the table. I spoke too soon saying about um, I putting the barrage of brakes really before. <laughs> I'm sure it's, oh, it is coming. it's going to come. So we talk uh, whilst the frame sort of there's been yeah, a bit of a lull. Got that one. But I think the blue is going to come to his rescue, is it? I wonder if I wonder if that blue has uh, no, I think has blocked the red. Yeah, he's looking through the black goes now, so if he can, it's a good chance to put some points on the board. Yeah, so it looks as if William can get through to this red, and I think he can just sort of punch it out to stay on the black. Oh, that's a lovely shot. That's a good shot there. Not nice, nicely played and. Uh, He's at the business end of the table now, so he could. Uh, yeah, it's could it's just a shame we can't see whether or not the uh, the black goes past that pocket once it's respotted. It looks tight, doesn't it? It looks very tight. But that's a nice shot as well. Yeah, he's brought a red out, and he's he's also on this red as into the same pocket. plays this as a soft screw he's going to want to make sure he doesn't snooker himself but if it goes to the opposite pocket he can just play around the back of it but it doesn't go so yeah he took the safer option there didn't he I think I think he had to, well, I'm not sure though he's not perfect on this pink well, it's a tricky cut back pink this isn't it I've seen these uh, miss thick a lot yeah that was um, a bit tougher than it probably looked like I just wonder if they had a little bit of heavy contact as well it just seemed to act a, a little bit funny but um he, d he did get up like he did get up like he thought he had a bit of a bit of bad contact there. Oh, that's a good pop. Nice shot from uh, from Daniel. Now, does he play the pink or does he uh, roll up behind that brown? What would you do? I don't know. Um, I think it depends really whether he's got an angle on that pink. Um, it looks fairly straight. Yeah, it? it looks as if he can. But he's getting. Yeah, he's, he's getting down to it, so perhaps he can. Oh, oh and 
Where's the cue ball gone? Where has the, <laughs> the cue ball gone? <laughs> there we go. There's the <laughs> first one of the weekend. But uh, yeah, he, well, th- that answer that question, he was obviously very straight on it, so he couldn't really really do much with it. I would have probably rolled up behind the uh, behind the brown, but I'm a bit of a nit. <laughs> how how does sort of Daniel? Obviously, you know Daniel better being in the same group but how does Daniel's play is he quite an aggressive player or is he quite conservative or uh, he does he does break very well but he prefers to well he seems to prefer to me to um, keep it tight weigh opportunities chip away at you and then uh, weld you back to the back cushion mm-hmm. so it's a really nice play against him <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sounds sounds <laughs> sounds really when you when you're coming up to the table and the cue ball's in a snooker or tucked up onto the ball cushion but uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a close opening frame, 20, 20 points all, so still plenty to play for. Just just a reminder for everybody, if they're a little bit confused, why um, uh, the, this match is best of five. So the game we watched earlier, groups six, seven and eight, they are all playing best of sevens in the round robin phase. Um, the other groups in the tournament, and uh, so groups one and two, groups three and groups four and five are all playing best of five. So that's the... Um, the reason behind that in, in the finals though the the races are extended by a, a further frame so tomorrow afternoon's final will be best of seven so that's uh, that's the reason why the races are slightly different amongst different groups yeah they emailed us round before the tournament started asking uh, what you know format we would like and being the fact that we've all got disabilities mostly in our legs as well as our arms we felt that the longer matches we wouldn't be able to cope and that by the end we the standard would just deteriorate so we've gone with a shorter format and then slightly longer final yeah I think um, I think that's a fair point you make obviously about um, the standard so we, we don't we don't well, I guess I guess burnout and you know fatigue and things like that we, we obviously want the best standard here possible so um, that's the reason why these groups are, are best of fives well you always want to come and try and uh, give your best and if, if, if the format prevents you from doing that it can be very disheartening you know especially if you've got bad I've got cerebral palsy so obviously uh, stand for too long, my foot absolutely rags, and you know you, it can be it can be quite depressing when you used to be started the match being able to pot, yeah. and then by the end you're just limping around the table. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's interesting you, you mentioned that, Andrew. Obviously, we said about like group three, so that's um, for like ambulance issues and uh, multiple limb issues. We know uh, Daniel here; he, he has some um, cerebral palsy. Um, William has a. Um, disease called charcot marrick tooth disease which uh, apparently affects his uh, muscles in his hands and he um, it's, it's a disorder to do with, with nerves and he wears splints on his feet so it's a good point you make obviously about the, the races of games so we want to try and uh, you know um, keep the guys as fresh as possible and, and obviously the standards as, as high as we can we don't get the opportunity to showcase disabled snooker very often so when it does come around you want to make sure that you get the you know, best possible exposure of it yeah and that's that's a really good point Really good point you make. So That's are you are you next on at five o'clock? Is that your next session? I, I am. Right? I'm going to Nigel, so I'm sure that'll be a, a, a tough match. Yeah. So anyway, like like, like you said, uh, Andrew, it was a good pot there from William, and it looks as if he's on the on the pink here. So that's that's a nice shot there. I don't think that red goes. I don't think the black's going to go past the red to the left, though. So we might have to screw across the face of the black and play it in the same pocket. Do you think? Yeah, he's going to. I think he's got an angle here to either punch it out or, or come off the, the top cushion here. It'd be interesting it. to see. Yeah, yeah. So he's coming behind it. And that's a that's a nice shot, isn't it? That's a lovely shot. Probably wouldn't expect him to uh, win the frame at his visit, but get himself a nice lead and put a call safe in. Yeah, that's that's not. Yeah, it's it's about um, it's about sort of getting an advantage here, isn't it? And trying to put himself into a real strong position. William did win his first game three 0 against Nigel Coton, so um, you know if if there was sort of frame aggregate, it is decided in frame aggregate in some way. Um, William would put himself in a very strong position. Um, like I say, he's 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 been in real form in this in on the WBS circuit. He won last month in in Northampton. He won earlier in the year as well the Northern Classic in in Press. In fact, he beat Daniel there in a, in a great fine. It was three two. They actually played on the star table up there. I remember it was three two to to William, but it was a, a really good game to watch. So he, he's in good form. 
Uh, and he beat him at Manchester when they used to hold the tournament there before the uh, Bellevue Riley's closed down. It was a Riley's and it became Q something? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, sorry, Jamie. I know it's closed down. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, we, we go to some great venues, don't we? Some really nice venues, but th- th- this is something different, isn't it? It's like a purpose built sort of snooker venue. There's, there's lots of space. You're not sort of bumping into people. There's not. Sort of loud music like a club atmosphere I mean we're really thankful for the other clubs that allow us to host but this is this is very different weekend to what we, we usually have on, on the circuit isn't it well absolutely no disrespect to the other clubs but uh, coming here is the highlight of the year I would say it's been, you know, playing on all the tables are just such a high quality the staff is so friendly and the food's pretty good as well <laughs> yeah I've seen a few of the players <laughs> see a few of the players and uh, officials uh, chomping on their, their lunch it looked pretty, uh, it's not very pretty good, good not very good from a waistline playing <laughs> You might have to undo a button on your waistcoat, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I can't tell if you played if you played that as a pot or does it around the end. Um, I think I think he played it as a, a bit of a shot and nothing really. I mean it was the only red he could I mean obviously he has left Daniel this this right. red on the rail, but he won't refuse this. Well, that's just an example of how you know brutal these pockets are. I think Daniel hit that pretty well. Um, it's just that if you, if you know if you graze the cushion on these star tables, they ain't going in. They're not going to accept them. And that's just a prime example of how you know just adding to the difficulty and the pressure perhaps this weekend. Another, another one, another example. Yeah, I said that probably would have gone on at your local club table, but here they are unforgiving. Yeah, they are. They are brutal. With your Shakespeare, it said, uh, "Have no fury like a tightly cut table." <laughs> we are also um, playing this weekend. We, we mentioned obviously about the, the WSF um, Championship places. So that's the WSF Championship is, is the biggest amateur event in the world, and the WSF work in partnership with organisations like the WDBS. Um, the World Women's Circuit, uh, the World Senior Circuit. Um, so, you know, th- there's real sort of harmony in terms of uh, that, that umbrella of organisations. So, you know, that the added bonus of, of having a place at the place in Dubai next year is, is fantastic. And one of our long-term supporters of the WBS, uh, Johnny Welsh of uh, Fizzsync 360, he's um, he's kindly support, he's going to support the players who will make the trip to Dubai with, with uh, covering accommodation costs and and travel costs as well. So that's you know we're very thankful for that that support and generosity from he from John. He has to hit the green here otherwise. Nope. And uh, it should be a good ch- a good chance to put some points on the board. Yeah, he's he's really he, he could uh, I mean he's twenty five up here with, with five reds left. So sixty seven on so he still needs a few more balls but he can really Took that one in the corner. So. Just a bit of looked a little bit of deceleration, wasn't it, on the cue action there? He's he's obviously tried to stun it in, but he's he's paid more of a stun run through than anything. I'd be cheeky to go for the uh, the black in the middle here, but I think he's gonna play it safe. Do you think play off the brown in behind the yellow, or play off the yellow in behind the brown? I think because he's he's in front, I don't think he needs to force the issue, does he? I think he would just perhaps even put a colour safe. He might look at, like you say, either sort of yellow or brown it looks like he's playing the brown and possibly dumping on the side cushion I want to go the green left he didn't really want to leave the brown in the middle of the table though so then you'll get the chances not really got any ball safe apart from the two reds obviously on the side that's pretty good though isn't it I mean that's he'll, he'll set over that I think he's he's covered the red at the bottom next to the black and really I, I can't see a path back to no, back I to bulk down I think you'll have to try and just land up to those two reds and hope that uh, William doesn't Oh, oh, he did. He did. Uh, there was a path. I mean, he obviously, he's, he's under hit massively, but well, he'd be he'd be happy with that. He'd settle for that. I've got a newfound respect for the commentators on uh, on TV. I always used to. Used to say, oh, they always say obvious things. <laughs> but when you're sitting here with my front you, you have to think what we're going to say. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, you've got to think on your feet, haven't you? I think it's um, it's um, it'd be quite spontaneous, but uh, you know, hopefully, people are enjoying the stream and um, 
commentary and stuff this weekend. It is the first time we've, we've live streamed one of these events. Um, hopefully, it's something we're going to try and do in the future as well. So, if you have any sort of ideas of how to make it better, or if you've got any questions at all, um, by all means, just um, contact us on social media. WBS is on Facebook, it's on Twitter, um, and obviously, you can, you can ask us a question in the YouTube chat box uh, next to us, and we'll try the best to. Um, to answer it for you I'll make sure you only say nice things about me <laughs> no of course and the commentators <laughs> yeah no I, I agree with you there Andrew don't say get him off get him off <laughs> so this is a chance for for Daniel, for, for Daniel. Ooh, and yeah that's not um, I think that's end of break you one would imagine I'm very delicate we could actually um, tap up behind the block here to from on all the reds you have to be very careful, otherwise you're leaving that red, easy red. You probably just flip the table. Yeah, so just uh, don't he doesn't really want the blue going safe. Well, that was the only problem with playing that shot was the fact he's definitely going to need the blue now. Five on, there's still three reds left, so 51 on. Awesome. I'm gonna say that's a fine shot. I'm not 100% certain you meant to land tight behind the green, but that was a well, that's that could, be a, argue could be that. A, that could be a frame winner right there, can it? I mean, that's we'll, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. We'll say that's a, a very good shot. I mean, that's that's put Daniel in, in quite a lot of trouble. I mean, he's, he's already in trouble in this frame, so the last thing he needed to be was there. He is very good at the angle though, Daniel, so if anyone could uh, find a way on this safe, I'm sure he could. Yeah, he's got really good, uh, when I have watched Daniel play, he's got really good knowledge, it's like you say, in regards to the, the game and angles, and um, plays the right shot as well. Uh, you, know, you know, I'm very impressed, he, he doesn't play anything sort of too rash. I, mean, he's, I think he's, that might be the last, the last shot of this. Uh, he was in big trouble there, though, wasn't yeah, he? Yes, he was. He, he did well in the billiards tournament he held at Northampton on, on the Friday. Yeah, so so we had our first uh, WDBS English billiards event at Northampton last month, um, and Daniel got to the final, and he lost to I think it was John Fenwick. Yeah, it was John Fenwick in, in the final. I think it was a really close final. I think there was only a few points in it. Um, so obviously, you know, Daniel's. You know, we we say obviously with English billiards, you've got to know your angles. And back in the day, that's what people used to play before they played snooker, so they, they would learn angles. So. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, well, I'm a huge fan of billiards, so anything to get it back on the on the, in the public vision would be fantastic. Watching the Blue Arrow Masters. I think they've got the um, the World Billiards in in Leeds starting next week. They've got the World Open. Um, going on this weekend at New Northern Snooker Centre. Hopefully, there might be. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Hopefully, there's perhaps a bit of live streaming. I know there's been live streaming the last couple of years, the finals and stuff for Clive Everton. So, um, but yeah, billiards is a is a fantastic sort of discipline to to play and obviously learn different things. Anyway, in the meantime, Daniel's potted the red that uh, William wanted to pot, and uh, he could get back into this if he. This looks a good shot. Oh, this is a fantastic shot. Absolutely plum. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. That's uh, really well controlled, and she's got the black waiting over the pocket. If you can deposit this red, you might be feeling a bit disappointed. He uh, left that blue safe now. Yeah, that's that's going to be an issue down the line, isn't it? You can get an angle off the uh, off the brown to try and bring it out, but it'd be nice if it was in the middle of the table. I think he's just happy that he's at the at the table, and William didn't, um, you know, leave him with quite snookers. But he, he, he's back in. He's he's well back in. He's got a chance. Oh, he's overhit that one though, a bit of adrenaline in the queue arm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd, you'd prefer to be sort of a lot shorter than longer there. I, I don't know again if that's a table that, that's caught him out a little bit, or like you say, just a bit of adrenaline getting back into the frame. But uh, he'd be a little bit upset that he's not on the yellow. Yeah, you want to try and under hit those shots if you're going to if you're going to uh, do it because he's always going to get the rest out. He's a good rest player, so as long as he was between the two. Second half of the table before the ball climb, he was absolutely fine. But from a position of, you know, William a couple of pops away from winning the frame, Daniel has got himself back in the He's, oh, he's, he's still seventh yeah. behind. He's played, he's played a good one here. I think. He's going to be kicking himself because he had a fantastic chance to pinch the frame. So. 
see if he can put down in the game. Do the business. I think William can just just see the edge of this this yellow. And the beauty is with the with these reactive cloths, that's uh, that's a nice shot. You, you really just it's, it's about touch, isn't it, on these tables? Yeah, you can see them getting more and more used to it as much goes on. At the start they were over hitting everything and now they're starting to get the right line. I didn't really want to put the black there. Or the yellow there. <laughs> so this is um, half a chance for, for William. He needs um, uh, yellow and green would, would leave him 22 up with 22 on. But, uh, mm. And again, just an example of how severe these pockets are. That's Ted Lowe today, and what's he done? <laughs> <laughs> so straight away, a chance straight back to Daniel. That's an opportunity missed there for, for Daniel. Is the brown going to come to the rescue? Good chance to uh, get this tight on the back cushion now. Plays this up and down. Yeah, I'd, I'm just wondering whether or not he's got an angle that he might actually go for this yellow because it looks as if he might possibly could be clattering to the blue. Though. That's the only problem here. But no, he's played. Uh, he's, he's played the right shot there. I think he's. Uh, tried to I think it's been a bit of a liberty going to the yellow. There. He's looked a bit thick, and I thought he might. Yeah, and, and also he, he doesn't need to force it, does he? He just needs a couple of balls. Whilst it's, it's Daniel's probably got to be a bit more of a the aggressor, I think. It's very hard to tell on uh, from this, um, from this angle. It looks a lot different from what he does down the table. Have you got, have you got Yeah, the camera angles do, do look different, don't they? I mean, if you're actually sort of on the table or in the arena, they, they, they can look uh, different to what it is on the monitor. Do you not find it from here if it goes for the yellow? Well, it's, it's very thin, isn't it? But yeah, I think it is tracking towards the corner pocket. So, and because the cube is so close to the cushion, it's, it can't really too much on the on cue ball you can only really hit the top half of the, of the ball well, well you said you like billiards and your angles you've called it there uh, Andrew do know what I'm talking about <laughs> no that's um, <laughs> that's your commentator's eye then <laughs> so then this this frame has um, this frame has certainly turned around this could really be coming down to that blue now yeah, we, we go back to what you said about the, the, the blue ball, getting the blue ball safe. Um, he might regret that decision. These middle pocket shots from here though are a lot tougher on these tables. We've got a much narrower record. And uh, proving right again, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> I'm getting my eye in now. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be a little bit frustrating for Daniel because he was, um, that was a real opportunity there. I mean, he, So this is this shot's all about pace, and I think he's overhit it. He might go to the other side of the nose. Oh, no, is he snooping himself? I can't quite help me. Yeah, he certainly can't get to the potting angle, but I think um, again that was a, that was a tricky, a tricky one to judge coming up and down the table. And he's and he's clipped the the brown on the way through, so. And what's he done? <laughs> and obviously it was very, uh, very tight. So this frame still, he still hasn't put it to bed yet, will you? The question is, will uh, Daniel put it back? Or is he another crack at this? Yeah, I think he's going to have a crack. Oh, he's trying to bring the blue, trying to bring the blue off. That was a very clever shot. Yeah, that was, um, well, I say unlucky, but obviously the, his intentions were really positive there, trying to, trying to bring the, the blue off the, off the cushion. Well, he's definitely thinking correctly, so that, yeah. As long as you think correctly and then somehow manage to cue correctly, you need to do okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's difficult under pressure, isn't it? Playing in competitions to actually see the right shot. Sometimes it's easy for us here, um, you know, when people sort of do, do their sort of armchair commentary at home. But under pressure, you don't always sort of think straight. And, um, you know, that's, that's one of the, I guess, what separates the, the good from the great is actually thinking under pressure and obviously performing under pressure. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely um, guilty of being a bit of an armchair commentator myself and you know, 
now being here, I'm like, yeah, it really is a hot job for this box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do you think Daniel actually went for that, or do you think he just hit it? Because, I mean, he wouldn't have been on the brown. I mean, no, I it was a risk, risky shot, wasn't it? To no, I think he meant to catch that. I don't think he meant to go for that. Wow. Ooh, wow. Wow. Well, you, you could see William's reaction from as soon as he stuck the cue that it wasn't going where he wanted it to go. That's a bit of a let off there for Dan, you got to say. Yeah, Dan, you got a good opportunity. You could even clip off it bit and try and knock the blue out. Which is what he tried. Well, anything could have happened then. He could have brought the blue out, he could have gone in off, he could have snooked in behind the black. Off, if he'd gone in off, then that would have been disastrous. William still can't deposit this, this oh. screen, he's getting a bit frustrated. Good chance for Daniel now. He's quite good with the rest, so we can drop the green on off the cushion, then land, pop the brown, land straight behind the blue. Good chance. Yeah, I, I think the way the blue is, I'm, I'm not sure it's he, he can go for the blue down the cushion. I, I don't know if it's... I mean, that would be an extremely risky shot, even if it is well to the cushion, so it's, it's easier. Yeah, he's just sort of took his medicine there, and he's just going to develop and play good safety. No guts, no glory. you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's well back in the frame. You, you wouldn't have thought that with, like, four reds left. I mean, William was in, and it looks as if he was going to coast to the frame, so he's done well to take it this far, Daniel. Yeah, I must admit, I thought it was over when he, uh, he left that red on before. But not played a very good one here though. Anyway. Seven. Seven. So he's William is four in front, so he, he needs uh, blue and pink for the frame. Is that is, that's, oh, a that's a terrific shot. shot. That's a fantastic shot. That's a real confidence right. booster after you know missing a few, few balls you didn't expect. Do you get down and play this dead weight, or do you try and hit it a bit hard and get it? It goes away from the it goes away. I think Adrenaline needs to play it with a little bit of pace. He's, he's, he's missed, missed it. it. Yeah, he's and it's all over then. Well, he has. He's he has left, left it. What a, what a turnaround this is. Um, like we say, with, with three reds left, it looked as if William was coasting the victory. And what, what a pinch this would be. What a steal this would be for Daniel. You might see Daniel give a little fist bump if he manages to clear up here. He's just looking at it. I think the only, the only issue with this is that there's a slight angle the wrong way so I wonder if he would try it heavy do you think he would try and get close to the black or do you no, think I he think would he'd try and uh, move pinch pocket so it's try and leave it where it is and come and then just play the long brow long black yeah yeah so he's left a, a little bit of distance <laughs> on the black but you'd expect Daniel to pot this but it's a little bit of pressure what a what a steal this would be you wouldn't have thought uh, Daniel would be in this position about five ten minutes ago no this could be a early blow okay Shot. Well Terrific shot. So that is an absolute steal there for Daniel But uh, Kept himself in the frame. William will be ruining a couple of misses um, throughout, especially a couple on the green. So he takes the first frame in this best of five, and we'll be back with you uh, in frame two.
Thank you for uh, joining us back again. It's the uh, frame two of this Group Three match here at the Paris Cues Champion of Champions, at the Southwest Snooker Academy in Gloucester. Daniel Blunt's going to be pretty, feeling pretty, pretty good with himself after pinching that, that opening frame. I'm uh, Michael Dam, joined in the box with uh, Andrew Harper, who's uh, another competitor in this weekend's Group Three event. And uh, no one's supposed to be biased, but if Daniel can manage to win this match, it actually helps my points out a lot. So. Yes, <laughs> yes, you, you do have a um, bit of uh, vested interest in, in the match. So, of course, we'll remain impartial oh, in the course, commentary. Of course, of course. What? So, uh, I'm sure William will um, give you mentally enough to recover from the first ring, but that's got to be a little bit disappointing. And that is the first ring that he's dropped this weekend. He's the winner's opening match against Nigel, coaching 3 0. So, he's got to bounce back. This, this shot, uh, Daniel, like me, has got cerebral palsy in his bridging hand, so shots like this, of course, are incredibly difficult. I have to get all the paraphernalia out for this one. Yeah, and that's that's obviously the, obviously these types of shots is where disability can come into play for players, so you actually have to... Yeah, he's refusing, in fact, he's refusing the shot. very inviting for trying to get moving off their shot but in a few shots time trying to get in behind. Yes, it's going to be a good position isn't it for a bit of, a bit of safety player or a snooker. But he's played a great one there and uh, got Daniel Bang in trouble. Yeah, it's good, good length of cue all that wasn't it. Good return though from, uh, from uh, Daniel. He's completely cut off the uh, right hand side table as he looks from that. Oh, try and get pop, try and get right hand side table behind the back of the black. It's just a quick, uh, just a quick reminder that um, the results this weekend's event and all the different groups are on mysnookerstats.com. So if you are wondering how players players sort of going on and you might be watching the stream there's players you're keeping an eye out for um, it is on my snooker stats uh, the first session results I think have um, all been put into the um, supercomputer here and um, you'll be able to also see throughout the weekend where the players are in the, in the round robin tables because um, players will be looking at that towards the end of today and obviously tomorrow morning because the top two in each group will make it through to their um, event final so that's, that's going to be very important coming up soon and uh, like we said frame difference potentially could play a, a factor in in, um, in proceedings so go over to mysnookerstats.com if you want to keep up to date with all the latest results from this weekend <coughs> champion of champions that's a lovely job I picked out the line there for Can't quite tell from you whether he's just got the sneaker or not. I I, th I think he might have done. Yeah, the the, 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 the yeah the, the referee is um referee's had a had a good at that, so he's he's obviously wanted to see. I don't know if, it, if this is a foul and a miss to reposition the balls. I don't think you can get through to the red that's furthest left of the table. And if you can try and play the uh, off two cushions and glance off the red. It's a, it's a good effort, yep, that's that's totally the shot that he played, but he's either going to be put back or have to play from there, so... Well, he can't really, there's no uh, red string to try and roll onto except for the uh, one the back cushion, and there's just no way of getting to that, so... And if, obviously if he misses this three times on the fourth time, it's just a foul, not miss. This is where the referee really comes into play to make sure that it's uh, spot on from where it was before, as, as close as possible. He wasn't too far up from that shot. You should be able to get yeah, these cushions are sliding more than your club tables. So, a little adjustment, and we'll see how we do. And there we go. Yeah, so that, that that's gone the other way, hasn't it? That's uh, just a little bit too thick. So those shots look really nice when they get pulled. You know, when 
players pull them off. You see quite a lot of the professional players playing that way. But you've got to be so accurate because, you know, to either miss the ball completely or hit it thick is a very sort of narrow, um, narrow sort of area. So good opening red there from Daniel. He, he is on the black row, a little bit lower than what he wanted to, but chance just, to score a few points. I just uh, sat out here making a 40 break and from this exact position, so uh, he holds his nerve. I'm sure he might do it again. So, I spoke too soon there. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> did he have a, a 40 in the opening game, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic shot. Lovely shot, fantastic shot. Yeah, it was a, well, I say shot to nothing, but I mean, if he if he stuck that in the jaws, he must, you know, if hit the jaws, he would have stuck it up. But it's a, it's a nice shot, brave shot. Yeah, the only body that left was that one, but that playing at that pace, he was always going to leave it if he missed, so. Took muscle. a real good chance here for, for Daniel to, to score a few more points. He's already got a, a 20 point advantage. He's just a touch short on this red, isn't it? He's coming there. Uh, might be able to play a pink one for the middle, possibly. Or is he going to play the second one across? As we said before, I think, um, I don't know if the word revenge should be used, but Daniel has lost to William three times in finals on the, on the circuit, so he'll be so keen to get a victory over him and I mean what what a time it would be this weekend to, to get a victory of WB, our WDBS's biggest event ever really that's a lovely shot again from Bangham ah oh, perfect and yeah if you wanted to win any tournament there this would be the one to win who doesn't want to go to Dubai I mean there's there's so much at stake isn't there like, like I say the trophy and the title and the prize money so it'd be a really good time to break his duck over William I've, I've played with the WDBS since it started and there's a smaller tour before it started. I played that as well and just seeing it evolve over the years has been heartwarming. Yeah, we we've, we've got players from new players popping up all the time and, and different nationalities getting involved. Um, the example of that last month in Northampton for one of our events we've had a, a record break, I think it was over eighty odd players from, from different countries in Europe and in, in Asia, so it's fantastic uh, to see you know, the outreach that we, we, we're getting now. But uh, obviously there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, it's going in the right direction. Well, Raj was supposed to be playing here from... I um, can't remember what classification is in his work there. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, Raja um, was supposed to be playing in the, in the um, Group 4-5 event. But unfortunately, he's had to, he had to pull out, so that, that was a shame because uh, Raja was one of the... Obviously, when the association started, Couple of years ago, he was a prominent figure in, in events, but um, hopefully, we'll see him again at some point in, in the future. Back on the Billy's bandwagon, he's also a fantastic Billy's player and does well near Billy's comps. Yes, yeah, it does very, very well in the, in the Billy's. I think actually, um, did he get to like last 16 in, in one year or? He didn't even down at the uh, Northern Tube Centre. Yeah, so a very um, multi talented cueist. Yeah, another opportunity to a few more points in the body. Well, I just might like cover themselves a bit so he can get a chance. Who would you feel? Those two in the middle of the table really open up the, open up the game. Yeah, he's got a nice angle, hasn't he, to, to drift down to the business end of the table. As long as you can get on the right hand side of the table as we look, where all the red, all the red left hand pocket can be fine. He's over hit that one a touch, I think. Nice pull up there, Well, that's a lovely shot. If, if he presumably can get to the point and angle of this red directly under the black, um, that's a fantastically weighted shot if he has. Looking at it, looking at it like a guard. Well, I would have thought it was too. That's a great pop. Yeah, that's. I mean, he, he, I guess the beauty of that, he did have a, a couple of options. Um, if you didn't land on the one underneath the black, you hit the one in the middle. I think there was another one in the middle that went as well. So, Daniel's doing angle. well there. He's got the angle to play onto again, so let's see how he does. Look. That's 
pretty good. That's pretty good. I think I think I think he deserved um, a, a bit of good fortune there because he he's um he's had himself together well since uh, the middle of the first frame. He's, he's done really well and he's, he's in a strong position here for frame two. Habit of like Mark Williams looking at balls for ages, uh, like, oh, did they go? Did they go? And then just getting down and just flopping them in. You'd be frustrated when you're in the chair thinking you might be coming back to the table. <laughs> so he's a um, bit of a head shaker, then. He shaker, he was, he was he might be perfect, but he's still not happy with being in perfect position. There was a few more points there. He could have, he could have it up. So William was out of the chair pretty quick. Then one. Yeah, William. He's um, he'll be a little bit anxious now, I think, because it has changed around quite dramatically. But you know what a good player William is. I mean, he, he I mean, would have, he's under hit that unfortunately. He went to the other side of the thing. Stopped. He stopped on it a bit. Then. Yeah, it was a bit of sort of decel. That. Yeah. Just wonder whether or not he's got enough angle to come up that in and that bulk. I think he has, but he's, he's got to navigate the bulk colours. We played that one nicely. Yeah, this is looking this is looking really good. Yeah, perfect. Referee, be reminded there which foot it goes on. I think yeah, I think I think the referee. Um, I think William might have preferred it if the referee had put it on the blue <laughs> spot. It would have been more in the open, but. Uh, I don't think the black goes into either corner pocket because the red underneath is, is blocking it there. Not quite sure whether whether the pink goes into an, any pocket either. No, it's hard to tell whether or not the um, pink goes past that top of the three reds. Oh, he thinks it goes past the blue. So. Could do a clearing the red directly below the black and it really open the game up. Yep, so he just snuck in, so keeps the break going, although this is a... He missed a shot similar to this one on the pink in the last round, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. I think um, perhaps the, the the frame before it was a little bit thinner than this, but he's... Let's see if he can make right the wrong this, on this occasion. Find out if that pink goes past the red. I think he's going to play the blue here. I think is he? Is he or? It's, it's hard to tell whether this uh, pink goes into the corner. It did go into the middle. For a second, I wonder if he was going to play the blue and yeah, the uh, blue play a bit, a, a bit, yeah, a bit of drag. But um, yeah, and he's a little bit unlucky there. <laughs> That's what he thought about that shot. Yeah, a li little bit of frustration there from William because he uh, I felt as if he deserved a little bit more than that because he played a positive shot by going into the reds. Do you have to take your medicine and try and uh, play a good shot? I don't think they're going for the plant, do they? You've got to look at the plant. Well, you wonder if this is a little bit of frustration if he does play the plant, but he's, you know, he's not happy the way that cannon worked out. He, I, he felt he deserved better than that, and I think he did. But um, I'm with you, Andrew. I think, uh, you know, a good safety is the menu of the day here. Well, you always feel a bit uh, jaded when you play the positive shot, try to open the red up and land with absolutely nothing. Play the plant. I mean, he, he did. To be fair, Jimmy, he played a bit of safety and all. But uh, Frigate 21 does get him back into the frame a little bit. He left Daniel with his hand on the table and uh, 
Then I take the red towards the king. Then I play the shot. Then play the shot. Yeah, certainly, certainly it's an option, isn't it? I think, um, as you see, Andrew, it is a bit of a shock to nothing, this. Yeah, like I say, the, the main objective there was, was getting the cue ball back into bolt. Waste cut in, and viewers who watched the opening game uh, this morning in our, one of our group six events, there was a, a waste cut foul called on uh, uh, Leroy, which came as a bit of a surprise to him to say the least. But uh, we can't have the waste cut not touching the, the equipment. So they've only recently um, put the dress code as of, uh, as of this year, isn't it? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, we, we're now playing obviously full dress code, that's um, that's the standard that we're. Um, that's the standard that we're, we're at now, so um, I think it adds a you know element of professionalism to it, and that's, that's the standard that um, every player has to uh, achieve. It certainly does, because uh, one of the first times I turned up in there uh, in trackies and a polo shirt, so although not quite as comfortable, it's uh, <laughs> I think definitely more professional. I think obviously, like moving forward, one of the, the main aim with the WDBS is to get the, the sport rightfully back into the Paralympic Games, so um, we need to be as professional as we can, and obviously. Um, as many people involved and many countries involved so everything's sort of coming together gradually um, it's all heading in the right direction well we'd, we'd love to see uh, snooker back in the Paralympics we've been uh, getting so much more coverage recently over the last since since 2012 the Paralympics have really got more notice on TV and more people who are disabled are starting to take advantage of playing disabled sport and it's going to be a good thing yeah, exactly, and there's there's no there's no reason why not um, you know disability snooker could be one of the biggest disability sports in the world because as we're proving from our events this weekend with all the categories on the show, it's it's a real showcase. Um, you know, and anybody can play the sport, and, and you see um, players of all different disabilities. They you know that they adapt where they can. They they use different implements and devices to play. Just because they have the disability, they it doesn't mean the end of playing snooker or not playing snooker at all. The ingenuity of some of the players is, is mind blowing. Um, first time I came, um, a guy who had just invented different instruments with weights on it because he only had one hand. It was just absolutely, absolutely fantastic to see. Yes, yeah, really, really inspiring to see. You know, even through adversity, they're still playing the game and competing as well. Coming to events like this, you know, we were saying it's a would be disappointed with that. You're saying there's a great atmosphere off the table, but on the table it's deadly serious. Yes, um, well, we all reasonably get along off the table, but on the table, you know, there's no friends in the game. Also, the uh, classification system is still obviously a work in progress, but it does allow people um, to play, you know, play the, the table snooker because if you just lumped everyone in together, it would be. Uh, soul destroying for people who are more, you know, are more disabled than others. Yeah, and I think, like you say, that is a work in progress for the WDBS and, and things have changed at the start of it. It's obviously about making it inclusive so all disabilities are involved, but, you know, making it competitive and fair. And one of the WDBS ambassadors is uh, Rob Walker, which we know obviously from snooker circles is um, the MC at the Crucible and BBC events. Um, but he is also a respected Paralympic broadcaster, so he's obviously heavily involved with Paralympics, and he is an ambassador for the WDBS. And he did actually come from the Northampton event um, last month to talk to the, the committee and, and players about sort of moving forward in the future. So it's great to have his um, his thoughts on that too. And he was just running the wrong side of the blue way, so he's going to try and force it around, try and not hit the yellow. Oh well, no, he's just. I'll take the six point. Oh, he's missed it. Yeah, you might be happy with that, really. No. 
sometimes when you play a negative shot like that, you just think, I'll just pop this and then I'll, I'll run up to you. Well, you can deaccelerate on the shot a bit. Yeah, sort of take it for granted. More, more, yeah. Yeah, like, I'll drop this in and then I'll play this next shot. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> I'm saying that because I do it every time I play. Oh, but this is a lovely shot. Yeah, it's good, boys. You swung it around a, a couple of cushions. Frame style, a little bit scrappier as it's going on. Yeah, I was about to say with the you've now got the brown and blue in the favourable positions and all three reds underneath the all four reds underneath the black. Obviously, he's going to lose this red now. It would take some uh, it take some doing to to make a you know a nice scoring opportunity the way these balls are positioned. The reason he's played a pearler there, and yes, it would be a Herculean task to try and clear up from here, but. for William, um, but like you say, it's, it's going to be very difficult to, to win the frame in one visit, but you can certainly get back onto level level pegging terms or even take the lead in this frame. Yeah, you should be staring at that red drop below the black now, desperately trying to get on it, clear it, and uh, give himself a good chance to be ahead of him. I think he, I think he under hit that there, he wanted to push the, the white up further, the table, then play the pink, as it is he would have to play the pink with the, with the, uh, the, with the rest and screw back, so so I'm going to change sort of directions now, I'm going to play the green instead. That's a bad miss from William, you won't be happy with that. He's, uh, he's under a little bit of pressure, isn't he, Andrew? Yeah, hanging his head there. Try and keep your chin up when you play and don't let your opponents know if you're frustrated. I think it was it was such a it must have been such a disappointment to lose the opening in front the way he did, especially in, you know in such a commanding position. Well, he played such a great he played such a great blue, didn't he? And he thought uh, landed directly behind the pink, and he thought this is the end of that one. But, uh. well, he's far from over this frame. Yeah, there's there's quite a lot of value in this, in this frame left. There's quite a lot of uh, Quite a lot to do before either player sort of confirms it. I feel sure Daniel will go for this bit now. Just coming around and looking at the, uh, the potting angle. And this will be, if he manages to lay a good snooker, it would be a devilish one to get out of. Yeah, it wasn't, perhaps it wasn't as easy as, as we thought, especially on the, you know, the, the active cloths and not being used to the conditions perhaps. Those little sort of touch-up shots can be a little bit, a bit tricky to judge, but uh, he, will be, he will be disappointed regardless of that. I think William just perhaps playing with a little bit of turned it over a little bit aside but uh, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good response. In the back of your mind when you try and do a roll up shot, so I, I know I shouldn't do but I do, I'm always worrying that oh, if I leave this shot I look like such an idiot. And you tend to <laughs> yeah I think that's I think that's the the, um, the overriding thought for most people, the embarrassment of sort of leaving it short and then putting yourself in trouble as well. So it's a bit of a double whammy isn't it when, when those happen. Yeah, that's why though, all the good players don't think that and that's why I'm not a good player. <laughs> see in the, in, in the corner of the screen you'll see um, other people coming into this 
the the shot. So we've, we're playing in the the arena here at uh, Southwest Nigger Academy. So there's there's nine tables in action overall. Like I said, we can can obviously only stream one one table per session, um, but there are another eight tables in action. So that's obviously competitors from all the other groups. So obviously groups one and two is our wheelchair event for the weekend. This is a, a group three match. We have uh, groups four and five there together. That's the, an event. Group six is for intellectual impairments, by the um, impairments there. Um, group seven is um, uh, players with sight issues, and group eight is uh, hearing issues. So, um, we're hopefully, going to give all the different classifications a chance to be on the stream or sort of showcase um, the players in, in those events. Obviously, it's very difficult to, to keep everyone happy. Ideally, we, we would stream everybody <laughs> to get, get a chance on the stream, but that's not possible. But uh, Hopefully the players and people at home are enjoying watching the stream and, and we'll do throughout the weekend. Yeah, obviously it's fantastic to have a stream up and uh, hopefully we've met some other people who are still watching this and be listening and think, oh, you know, stand to see some people playing about the same standard as them. Just stand up and have a crack. Yeah, and if, of course if you're if you're watching this sort of live or watching this in the future, you know, we'd really appreciate if you could uh, you know mention it or leave a comment or even sort of share it. On social media, because we obviously want to try and uh, get as many people realising what we do and uh, for the future, so we can sort of expand the portfolio more in more ways than one. And the referees are doing an absolutely cracking job this week. There's, some of these matches can go on very, very long, and the uh, soldier on through without complaints. So. Yeah, we were saying in the first, uh, the first match on the stream today. You know, we we're really appreciative of the work that the referees do like, like you say some matches can take longer than others um, but we have great support from the referees and different national associations so, oh, oh well that's uh, that's one for the highlight reel there that was um, uh, answers on a postcard can sure. <laughs> yeah that was um where did the uh, where was the red potted that sort of ABC sort of thing but um, we gleefully take that and he is on the black and he's sort of edging his south to win the tunnel up here, Daniel. Well, Daniel goes to a tunnel up here. Obviously, he's a fantastic player, but we wouldn't expect to be even closer than this. It'd be a good win if he can actually win this. Game. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure of the black this time. So 27 up with 35 on. Sorry, 26 up. I haven't got my abacus with me today, <laughs> so he does still need a red and a colour. Although a red would put in 27 up with 27 on. Yeah, I'm uh, reticent to say anything like that because I did a maths degree, so if I make a mistake, I might never hear the end of it. Ah, you didn't, you didn't tell us that. You've admitted a weakness now, so uh, we'll try and exploit that somehow on the commentary. <laughs> so if I'm making a mistake, feel free to uh, shout at me on Twitter. <laughs> Can you uh, like quote pi then to certain numbers and decimals and whatever? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I thought I was going to say 3.1419. Well, that's that's two more than I can remember, so that's it's pretty good. There's a joke about the number of uh, digits mathematicians, physicists, and engineers use. But, uh, you're yeah. an engineer. So, yeah, engineers, pi is 3.1, mathematician, <laughs> 3.1419. Yeah. Yeah, that that was um, not necessarily rash, but he was he was a fair way off. I'm putting that one away. I think he's a little bit frustrated, like the way proceedings have gone. Obviously, the first frame in a really strong position. example of you know how reactive these cushions are and these table for, for for a second if that was a club table it's, he's left putting it over the pocket. Two Williams was frustrated with uh, getting away with that one really. 
keep calm, play good safety shot here. And, uh, Although all the balls, Although all the um, the colours are off their spots, they are all in the open, so there is a chance of a, a, a counter attack. But that's a that's a fine that's a fine safety there from William. It's uh, it's given a, a window of opportunity here. You feel. Should think he's going to come off the short, come off the twice across here, or is he going to come off the short side? I think I think the issue here is is obviously you've got uh, the green in the way, possibly the uh, the black and the blue. So there's, there's a bit of traffic here to sort of navigate to get down there. Oh, oh. he managed to get off one cushion, so that's a fantastic. And that's why he got to billiards final. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He obviously, um, obviously very aware of his angles, but that, that's a fine escape there from from Daniel. Really was. Angles McDaniel. Yeah, or, or something like that. We'll have to put that on his um, we'll player profile. I don't think he has a nickname yet. We'll have to come up with one for him. <laughs> but we can't go with angles. That's already taken. Ah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. We'll have to give Daniel a, a nickname. So if anyone's got any ideas of what to give Daniel a nickname, let us know on social media or, or on YouTube. Hashtag WBS. <laughs> Anyone called Satnav? That would be a good one. Yeah, I was about, uh, I was about to say. Can't, you can't have more than one. I think. <laughs> I think. Um, I think Selby's also been called the Hoover before, isn't he? I do like Hoover, John, John, John Parrott called him that. I think that's a great. Yeah. He's, um, <laughs> well, he was. Um, he was willing that bit on the brand, I think he's got his wish there. So he's going to have to find uh, yet another escape here. Yes, that's a, that's a good one. saying that he has, he has left... Um, Half a chance here. And take a breath, keep calm, and dish up. Now at the minute, it's not there for William, is it? I mean, in the opening frame, you would have. Fancied him to get that. You would have fancied him to get it. Yeah, he's just um, he's just gone off the board a little bit after that opening frame. It's really sort of effective and losing that. shot that is from Daniel Blunt. So he's 27 up with 27 on so a, a colour would would leave uh, William needing uh, a snooker. So you can clever uh, clear the colours to tie but uh, I don't want to jinx him but he's usually a very good solid single ball potter so you'd imagine this blue would be going straight in the middle. Okay I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm sorry Daniel. you did jinx him Andrew. I'm so, Dan, Daniel you can sorry yeah, William you can send me the check for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the looks of it, like like we said, even though the balls are off the off their spots, they are all in the open. Some respect, so there's half a chance here. Oh, that just slows up. <laughs> but again, that's another example of how how these tables play so differently to anything else they they probably play on. A little bit of method there that if he if he did get close, a method there was a good chance. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. I think there, are uh, the, there are all the siders available. Don't think I'm being right. <laughs> I think um, yeah, obviously Daniel can't get to the bottom end of the screen. So this is going to be it could be a little bit difficult to to get a bit distance from from the green away from the pocket. But maybe he's got a he's played that well. Although saying that, I think he's going to be leaving the green in the middle of the table, so chance William again. No, it's 
just it's just not there at the minute, is it? And it's just frames over, you would think, now. Green, so now William does require snookers. I think it's just going to hold up in time. So this uh, just going to pop the brown just to make things certain. Daniel's nothing if not methodical, so he will be getting the tackle out this one. He can be 60 points up, he can be 6 points up, and he'll do the same routine every time. And that's why he's been so consistent over the years. Yeah, but th this is what I was saying earlier on about he, he, he tends to almost always play the right shot, doesn't he? And he treats every shot with the same respect, um, regardless of sort of difficulty. So I think that's, that's the reason why he's been so very successful <coughs> on the circuit. We, we've jinxed him there a little bit, but uh, at least he did pop the green. So Williams, no doubt, William will carry on because it is only it is only today. two four points in the Twenty-eight in it, right? Yeah, so it's two two four points in So he's going to try and leave the round and two. It's a fantastic effort from from William there. A little tap on the table from from Daniel. Keep sending you, send you tweets with a suggestion for Daniel's nickname if you want us to get out of this one. The map. I just suggested the professor. I quite like that actually. Daniel, the professor of Lund. Yeah. He's uh, got a prof he's got a professorial look about him. Yeah. Oh. Obviously, that was at sneak required stage, so the, the referee isn't going to call a miss, but that was a bit misjudged. It just looks a little bit pacey. It was good line, but wrong length unfortunately so Dan will certainly be keen to, to put away this brown and, and make sure of it it's never nice when your opponent gets one of the snookers they require and become a bit of a, a nervy affair after that yeah, not to let the white ball battle around too much as well yeah he just can't get rid of this brown can he so he's left it oh he's got a good chance here for there would be a bit sense of irony if William was to get this frame, especially after the, uh, the way Daniel poached the opening frame. So it would be a little bit of payback, but uh, he wouldn't be happy with that. Uh, that I think he might settle for this. Yeah. Oh, double kiss play. Where's the white going? Wow, this is flirting with danger. What's the brown going to do? Oh, the, wow, well, the brown had potted that. A lot of things could have happened there. In the you end, it's not hear turned William too William the white, willing that white in the pocket. Yeah, you? that was. Um, well, if your opponent can give you the foul points, it's, it's a lot easier. He's played this one well. I think he's just short. It was a good good line again, but uh, unfortunately, wrong wrong length. Well, as you always say, you've got to make sure you get the object ball safe before the snooker. So it looks as if Daniel's got a, uh, a snooker of himself here. Let me just sort of turn it over to this way. So this is another opportunity for Daniel. Obviously it's long distance, but uh, be a little bit anxious getting rid of this brown to take a tuna lead. As a just a reminder that this is a um, Group Three match, and these are the best five matches in the in the round robin. Tomorrow's final will be best of seven. Actually, 
put that one away. Yeah, that's that's well put away. So all his uh, all his fears have been resolved. There, he's um, should be taking a two 0 lead in this best of five clash. And I shall be leaving you after this for him, and uh, Tony shall be taking over. Yeah, thank you, Andrew, for uh, popping in. As we say that, he's missed him yeah. the blue. So yeah. William, yeah. 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 no, he's, he's yeah. decided to call it there that one. But um, no, thank you, Andrew, for for coming in, and obviously all the best for the um, the remainder of the event. We hope you enjoy the event. Thanks for your, your time in the comments. Thank you box. very much for having me. Brilliant. Um, we'll be back with frame three shortly, um, and I'm going to be joined in the commentary box by good Tony Sutton.
Okay, thanks for uh, joining us here at the uh, WDBS Paris Q Champion of Champions. This is a Group 3 event round robin game between William Thompson and Daniel Blunt. We've seen uh, Daniel poach the opening frame and then win comp more comfortably in the second frame as 2 0 in the best of 5 encounter. Um, Andrew Harper's left us in the commentary box, but I have been joined um, by Tony Sutherland, who's one of our wheelchair players who is qualified for the event this weekend. Um, thanks for Coming in, Tony, are you uh, enjoying the weekend? Yeah, it's been a great weekend so far. Um, some great snooker going on. Um, got off to a good start early on with a nice 3 0 win. Playing in a 5. I'm looking forward to see if uh, Will Thompson can get back into this game. He was looking a little bit frustrated at the end of the last game. He's not really queuing uh, like he normally does. But we'll see. It's a long way to go. Yeah, we were saying that um, obviously these are two of the most consistent performers in, in this particular category. Um, they're both obviously multiple time champions, but uh, could be a little bit of revenge on the cards here because Daniel has lost to William in three separate finals in, in the past. But uh, we know obviously how capable Daniel is, but um, he did, he stole the opening frame. I think that's probably the, the best word to describe it. He certainly did, and I think revenge is the right word probably because I think um, William gave him a bit of a hiding last at the last event um, in Northampton. I think he beat him. Beating three or four nil, um, but both very capable players. Um, a nice story from Will from the last event. Um, some people may know WBS sponsored a couple of players to play on the seniors tour qualifiers, and um, I couldn't go due to injury. And people were asking Will, "Is he up for it?" To which he replied, "I'm only 32." <laughs> so. Um just talking about the seniors and it, it's great obviously we the WDBS work in partnership with with the World Snooker Federation and obviously sort of under that umbrella you've got the WDBS you've got the World Snooker Seniors you've got the World Women's Circuit and um, we were talking earlier um, Tony about obviously the, the sort of golden carrot this weekend the additional bonus of having um, players the winners of each uh, event a position at the WSF, WSF Championships next year in Dubai what a you know, amazing opportunities. Now the stakes are being raised this weekend even more. Oh, definitely. It's, it, it's been nothing but talk about that for maybe the past six weeks since it was announced, at least. Um, and all four players and all the groups have been chatting and um, social media has been buzzing about it. Um, we're just looking forward to maybe seeing a few twitches, maybe in the final frame of the finals tomorrow, where it's either sort of the buy or goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that analogy. I mean, we, we, we were saying that earlier tomorrow. This. The final, there's, there's a lot at stake, isn't it? It's winner yeah. takes all tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're playing for, um, we're also playing for the Nick Oliver Trophy as well. So it's, um, it's really nice that the, you know such a prestigious event like this is in his, in his name. So it's, you know, it feels fitting. You know, the, the arena that we've got. I mean, we, we go to some really nice venues, but this is a purpose-built snooker arena. It's, it's everything sort of come together for this weekend. Yeah. Um, uh, it was nice to hear about Nick Oliver. I'm, I'm glad that John Harris is sponsoring that because. Nick Oliver not only played snooker for a long time, he also played on the BWPBA uh, nine ball tour, which I won. And spookily enough, we've also done something very similar. Our player of the year trophy will be renamed after after Nicky. And um, this year, and one of the players here this weekend, Daniel Lee, was the first recipient. And we also had a bit of a tribute to Nick, both at the World Nine Ball Championship last year, where he was first reserved for the GB team, but he was too ill and at the European Championship this year in Holland. So, you know, his name will live on in two organisations. I know his, um, his mum and dad, Vince and Cathy, were, were, were delighted to, to hear about what was going on this weekend as well. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, like I say, it is really, really fitting that we, we do have, you know, his legacy sort of will always carry on in, in both of the events that he played because, you know, he's a big sort of uh, a popular character on the Q-Sport scene, so Paul and Snoop as a player and a fan, so I think yeah. it's yeah, yeah, and all the stories I've heard, he's always very approachable, very friendly, and yeah. obviously, despite adversity, he always, in the way he sort of conducted himself, was always admirable. He, did, he had a lot of adversity, not just his physical disability, but also death as well. Um, and it had some brittle bones, which made when he was quite small. But around the snooker table, the pool table, and the new pool table, he was such a fierce competitor. You know, he, he, he won uh, lots of matches on the tour and, 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 and challenge events 
on quite a few occasions and also topped the rankings of the Challenge events a couple of times and uh, was actually the player of the year recipient in 2015 I think. And that trophy's now been named in his honour, as I said before. Yeah, it's um, it's it's really sort of heartwarming to to see that happen. So again, and Pat, a, you know, I haven't seen the trophy yet. It's a really beautiful trophy as well um, that, that we've got on offer this weekend. Well, back to this game, it looks like um, William might have got his cue on the go on again. He's got a good chance here. Commentator's curse there, but yeah, you uh, you jinxed him there, he, totally. He was, um, a little short of perfect on the blue, but I still expect him to pop that. And Daniel now in the prime position to give himself a healthy lead. Well, this is, um, we were saying that both these players, they won their opening fixtures this morning, so um, whoever wins this match is in an extremely strong position. It would, um, it would take a lot of things to, to work out to not to qualify. Um, so it's like yourself, Tony, obviously you put off to a, to a win, which is, you know, in such a... Um, such a big event like this, you must be delighted with winning this morning. Yeah, definitely. It's um, when you're playing round robin three matches, it's like anything. You don't want it. what you can't afford to do is lose that first match because you just put pressure on yourself then. Um, but in this group, I'm not really a bad man at snooker, but I'd be surprised if this wasn't um, this game wasn't repeated tomorrow in the final. Okay. Even if Daniel sort of won this game and, and beat William 3 0. Mm -hmm. I'd still say that if they played in the final tomorrow, it'd be a pretty be even Stevens and you know, put a gang go, you know, go right to the wire. Yeah, um, obviously oh. we had, um, before you were in the country box, we had Andrew Harper, who's um, one of the other players in this group. Um, you know, even himself said that uh, he knows it's a tough task for him and Nigel to try and get in front of these two in the table. Exactly. So, I mean, we, we could see, I mean, earlier on in our, one of our Group 6 matches, Leroy. Williams and, and Daniel Harwood, it's a possibility that could, yeah. be, could be a final tomorrow afternoon yeah. as well. Obviously, there's still plenty of time for a few shocks and surprises because nothing's saying that um, Nigel and Andrew can't win their next matches and um, get into that final. But as I say, there's a betting man, I'll put, I'll put a few pin on the two in the final tomorrow. A bit of a kiss off the black there. Yeah, it was a, it was a good shot. I think he was trying to. Um, Possibly avoid the black, yeah, but he, he, he's, he's um, I think the blue's far too thin for him to, to cut in, so I think uh, a good safety is the, the order of the day. Yeah, I'm going to start a little bit. That sometimes tends to do on his safety, you know, he's, uh, he's Dan Andrew, has been trying to get that out of him for a number of years, <laughs> but he's an attacking player, so I um, can't fault the results that he's had. Oh, that's a great shot from William. Yes, excellent shot. Yeah. I think I think you can make enough of the cue ball here that he's not hampered. Um, that he can he can pop the black ear fairly comfortably. A bit too thick though, so he is under pressure. And I don't know if you had the chance to see the opening frame, Tony, but William through the whole the world, it looked as if he was going to win the opening frame, but Daniel sort of just edged back into it and, and he sort of poached it. And he's been in control since. I've, I've never seen sort of William get frustrated before, but no. he does look a little bit I in that sort of figure. I haven't seen him like this before, but it does look like our first player maybe knocked a lot of his stuff in of him. Which is surprising given, given the build up he's had to this event. William Williams is still getting his game spot on for this weekend. I guess it's um, you know, the, the pressure of the prize in the tight is just exactly. going to mount up this weekend, yeah, isn't it? some of the pro games on the TV and they're playing the big money, £100,000 and you still play like Ronnie plays like it's just on the practice table and some of the others do of course as well. You just um, let you know exactly how tough this game is and how good the pros are, how good these players are here playing this weekend. It, you know, your game can stand up to this sort of pressure. I think I think you're right there. I mean, it, I think it's good to be nervous because it shows that you, you want it, but it's about obviously controlling those nerves and um, you, you know, this weekend, this is the biggest event that we've, we've held in terms of, you know, the, the lucrative things that we've got on the end of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just going to make tomorrow, um, I know Andrew was mentioning before, tomorrow afternoon could be a bit of a, a twitch fest in terms yeah. of, uh, you know, especially if few frames went to the deciding frame. But you may not see many big games tomorrow, but you will see quite a lot of excitement and uh, you and ours around the table all the thought. Some player you see players uh, maybe twitching on a few shots that they don't normally miss. And that's just me. 
<laughs> well, you you started well, Tony. So that's. Um, that's I've started, so I hope I finish. <laughs> so anyway, in the meantime, um, Daniel's capitalising on that miss from William, and he's, he's plumb on this red here. He's already in front. So, I mean, I wouldn't call it a, a, a shock if he was to win this match three 0 but certainly William would have started the favourite, and especially as you say. Um, you know, he did take a bit of a pace in Northampton last month. I think it was like either 4 0 or 4 1. So it would be fantastic for, yeah, for be Daniel's confidence. Daniel for his confidence. And, uh, he did get a bit of a kick there, but he did, he did get on the back. Um, we've got two reds, two loose reds here. I'm not sure about one that one by the pink goes and a bit of red move from it, but another. Seventeen ahead. Oh, just wanted to go past it, didn't he? And it's just <laughs> jumping the first break. I, I, I think he realised if he got on that red, it opens up the other red yeah. potentially, and he, he could have won from there. Actually, that I mean, he's capable. That could have been the game in that one. I think he might be tucked up behind the pink. I, I think for me as well, that little gesture, even though it was sort of light hearted, it proves that he, he really wants he to wants put a number on him. He really wants it, and I think. It would be a psychological advantage he's trying to get over William here by maybe beating him 3 0 and saying, Come on, son, you may play me in the final tomorrow, but this is what you're up against. Exactly. Well, as you said, I mean, there is a possibility this could be the final tomorrow. So, psychologically, you know, he wants to try and get a uh, first puncture. Yeah. Exactly. You might think that if he plays you the best of seven, it's like a clean slate, but if he could win this 3 0 or if he won it, leave it in the back of William's mind every time he plays a shot against him tomorrow. Not out of this yet. We were, we were saying earlier on um, about William. He plays a lot of able-bodied events, and he plays uh, on the Scottish tour. And he actually qualified for the Scottish national team, where he uh, played in the European Champs at Bulgaria. So he also played in Q School as well. William, he, he won a match. He got through a round, I believe, too. Yes, so. he did. I think it was the first one from this Disability Tour to play. School, and he, he did himself and the name and our organisation crowd. I'm sure he won't be the last. No, exactly. I think it's it, you know the, these events now, and um, obviously the the additional bonuses of going to the WSF championships and things like that. I think it aspires and inspires sort of um, players with disabilities who might not play on the circuit now. It, it's to give them well, actually, you, you can play for this, and there's these opportunities. So that's what it's all about, and obviously. Working with the WSF, that's that's fantastic to to when all these things up, and it's about you know putting the rewards out there so that you know the players will then commit, they'll practice, they'll come to these events because you know it does it does take time and it you know it does take money as well to travel to these events, so you know, you've got to be very committed to do it. But um, we're putting the rewards there now for players to to aspire yeah, to. Certainly it. have because obviously the top end of the program they do make a decent living, but you anything outside the top six. Probably talking, they still rely on sponsorship and family and friends, and in the amateur game, even more so. You know, players trying to get to the World Amateur Championship if they haven't got friends, it's quite difficult. That's a nice shot from from that, Daniel. That looks like it might be the, uh, the, be the game there. Provide, I don't think he's too straight on this pink. I think you get this pink, then the final word. I think it's all over by the shouting. To be honest with you, and I like the way. Ten years ago, he was rushing into that pink. Yeah. But he stayed, steadied himself, composed himself. He knows, he knows what a big shot that was. And we we noticed, we said that in the um, when I was commenting with Andrew, he takes every shot with respect. It's the same sort of routine every shot. He doesn't take anything for granted. And even though he's a little bit thinner on this than he liked, I think that's okay. I think he can come up in a bulk and obviously with a green being off its spot, that, that probably helps him. Steve Davis methodology, I think he uses. Wow, he's, he's missed it, so he's got but he's away. got away. And it's, it's that old analogy, it's the, the toughest ball, the toughest frame to win yeah, is the last one. one. And the toughest ball to part is the one to win the frame. <laughs> but he's had, a, he's had a very good run there to get that behind the green and yellow. I've known Daniel playing for disability snooker, I think, about the last 15 years when he was a young teenager, first came with his father. Um, he was you know, a young boy, about a foot and a half smaller than he is now. Such um, commitment to the game. Oh, he's oh, 
for a second I thought that was going to be sensational. That would have been a best fluke of the week. Weekend <laughs> yeah. so far on the stream that would have been. It would be a highlight reel I think it that would have been. It would have been a been. highlight reel that one. I love where the cue ball would have been if it would have went in. Plum on the green or the yellow. We have a bit, we've we rib each other a bit over social media being down. As you can see, he's got that really wide part of his hair. <laughs> and we keep saying that he's using wash and go. Well, he washed it, went. He washed it, went, <laughs> yeah. I've got a very short haircut myself. <laughs> you might see on the profile pic later. So in the meantime, he's, um, well, that's not a bad trick at all, is it? So this game isn't over by any stretch of the imagination yet. And last chance, so he's got a tough brown. But if you can get on this yard, you So, he's left Angler a chance this year. He is uh, 17 behind, 17 in front. So, Angler still needs the brown. To yeah, it'd be guarantee. 22 up. He would be 22 up with 22 on if he pops yellow and green. So, the frame is not over at all yet. Right. Yeah, he's, he's got the distance, but obviously the downside there was he could have left that hanging. A little bit fortunate with the double kiss there, it's kept the right of the table, but um, he's put distance in the balls, but he's, he's left dang a little pop shot at this, hasn't he? Yeah, and he's one of the best um, single ball long passes we've got. And this must be at least 11 and a half foot. We've got young man's eyes. He's only about 28. <laughs> wow. Tony Southern well, knows what he's talking about. There we go. That was the commentator. So he is 22 up now with 22 on. Um, what are you playing here, Tony? Are you I'm putting the brown in the middle of the ball cushion and bringing the white down here by the pink. Because, you know, some people might go for the double. And he has done. Oh, he played the double or played the safety there. Well, whatever he played, I bet he, he's he wishing to play it again. Yeah, he, <laughs> he definitely want that one back. I think the safety shot in the middle of the back cushion is a shot there, to be honest. But he's been a bit first because he's left with one cue over the black. Yeah, it's just it's just not happened for William, has it? Um, I mean, I think he's... It's frustrating because I, I, that, that cue ball could have gone anywhere and left him a much easier brown than that. Having a go with this again into the green pocket with safety in mind on the cue ball. He's got it. That's a terrific shot. Terrific oh. shot from Daniel Blunn. And that's, uh, well, he's on the cusp of a 3 0 victory, which um, would you'd have to say is very impressive to him. He'd have put good, he'd got good odds on the 3 0 win for Daniel at the start of this match. He's good a player though, we know he has. He is. Wow, that's shot. excellent. That's absolutely Bye. excellent. It's amazing when the pressure's off, what, what, you know, yeah. release. Yeah. When, it, when you've won the frame and then match, the balls seem small and the pockets seem bigger. <laughs> like dustbins, as uh, I think JV would say. Exactly. Right. Beautiful. Uh, it's just, just showing off now. And well <laughs> done, you don't bring up one. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm lucky to win because Probably apart from the first one, it wasn't. It was to quickly, it was outplayed by Danny in those in those uh, last one. So, uh, Danny was um, pinched the first frame, but suddenly deserved the one. I think. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more matches later on on the stream. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Yep, thank thank you very much, Tony, for um, popping in the com box. And it was You're only welcome. short, but. 
perhaps we might get in there again at some point of the weekend. Really Good luck for the um, remainder of the event for yourself. Thank you very much. And um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Like I say, Daniel's a 3 0 winner. We are going to be back um, at around 5 o'clock of our next session. Um, and that's going to be a match from um, Group 7. I think it's going to be between Nick Neal and Mike Gillespie. So that should be a fantastic match to look forward to. Um, thanks for tuning in, and um, we'll see you soon. Please share, please share the stream, Twitter, Facebook, friends, etc. Let's get as many people watching these great players as we can. And I second that.